always start a presentation with a video. Soften the crowd. I would like to start by recognizing and paying respect to the indigenous people whose land uh, we gather to meet and whose, and whose land Air New Guinea served in our past amongst today and helping us to shape our future. Our Minister for State Enterprises, the Honorable William Duma, other Ministers of State, Governors, Members of Parliament, Chairman of KCH, uh, Moses Maladina, uh, KCH Managing Director, uh, David Kavanamore, uh, my own Chairman, uh, Carl Yellow, other directors from state-owned enterprises, colleagues from state-owned enterprises, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honored uh, to stand before you uh, on behalf of the hardworking and dedicated men and women of Air New Guinea, Papua New Guinea's national airline, uh, to address this esteemed gathering of the 17th Papua New Guinea Resources and Energy Investment Conference. And I do offer my appreciation to, uh, to the President and his committee of the Chamber for allowing us the opportunity to present. The theme of this section, ready for the boom, although I must admit I thought about boom and planes all in the same sentence and was a little bit daunted, uh, but it does resonate deeply with us here at Air New Guinea uh, as, we witnessing the bur as we witness the burgeoning growth of the extractive resources across our nation. Papua New Guinea stands on the cusp 
of golden age, primed to harvest the fruits of a revitalized extractive resource sector. Gold, copper, gas, oil, coupled with expansions of existing operations are poised to not only transform our economy, uh, but propel us all onto an enduring path of economic growth, whilst stimulating other non-resource sectors, opportunities in agriculture and fisheries, livestock, and of course, tourism. While the numerous presentations over the past two and a bit days have painted a compelling picture of development fueled by the extractive industry, it's safe to say that any capital investment program undertaken during this period will benefit from the rising tide of activity. We recognize that the project program is a continuously evolving wave of development, promising a sustained level of investment over the next decade. Exciting, exciting times. And this is not a passing surge, but a powerful and enduring swell that will reshape the landscape of our nation. Enu Guinea carries 1.2 million passengers a year, 550 flights per week to 30 or so destinations, both domestic and international. We have 1,850 employees and 23 aircraft. Our on-time performance hasn't been great, as most of you will have experienced. We operate at around about 55% on-time performance. That means that the aircraft departs within 15 minutes of the time that we said that we would depart. Anything after that um, goes against us. We cancel 15% of those 70 or so flights a day. 65% of those cancellations are a result of technical issues. It could be a light on the dashboard. It could be something a little bit more serious, but nevertheless, we don't fly. I don't think you would want us to. Our crew don't want to, and certainly I wouldn't push to. And we stand by an uncompromised safety record. We are a heavily regulated industry. Our business, um, our business is often impacted and affected by elements that are largely beyond our control, but nevertheless, we take it on board and we operate our business to that effect. That was the challenge that was extended to us uh, by both our minister and our prime minister. In the face of uh, our country's remarkable growth, Air New Guinea recognizes its pivotal role in facilitating and supporting the extractive resource sector. As Papua New Guinea's national airline, we are committed to playing a leading part in connecting people business and resources across this vast and diverse nation. We are already witnessing increased demand for air travel. December month alone, our sales are up 25%. Uh, and those of you who have been through the domestic terminal can witness what 25% increased sales year on year look like. In the past year, we've seen a significant rise in cargo traffic as well, and passengers to and from uh, mining and resource project sites indicative of the growing interest um, and demand. And this trend is expected to continue and intensify as new projects come online, as feed progresses to, f to FID uh, for Papua Allergy and so on. Anticipating this surge in demand, Air New Guinea has embarked on a strategic transformation program to ensure that we are fully equipped to meet the needs of the extractive resource sector and the growth in our country. We are investing in a fleet replacement program with modern fuel-efficient aircraft, including the acquisition, uh, which includes the acquisition of 13 new aircraft, as the minister uh, alluded to earlier. It includes two Boeing 787 uh, Dreamliner wide-body aircraft, as you can see, and earlier 11 Airbus 220 narrow-body regional jets. Arriving in 2025, the Airbus A220 is known for its superior passenger comfort and fuel efficiency. We can operate that aircraft between Port Moresby and Leigh and burn 30% less fuel. It can also fly from Port Moresby to Singapore as well. It's got remarkable range. It will provide a seamless connection between major cities and it'll link resource project sites to major domestic and international centers, such as from Hagen uh, to North Queensland and and to the, our Asian markets. The increased passenger and freight carrying capacity of these aircraft will enable Air New Guinea to efficiently transport personnel, supplies, cargo equipment to and from resource project locations, supporting the sector's growth and operations. Arriving in 2026, 
The Boeing 787 Dreamliner is also renowned for exceptional fuel efficiency and long-range capability. It will enable us to connect Papua New Guinea to new key international destinations, such as Tokyo, Shanghai, Auckland, Delhi, even the west coast of the U.S., if we expand that fleet. It will facilitate the movement of people and freight and enhance our connectivity, will further amplify our role as a gateway to Papua New Guinea's burgeoning extractive resource sector. And New Guinea is also securing additional Q400 turboprop fleets. And I know I said earlier on this year that those would be very much in our inventory by now. What we have learnt is that Q400s are very, very much in demand around, uh, around the world. And it is imperative that we get uh, an operating model or a piece of equipment um, that does the job that we intended to do, rather than to sit in front of a hangar awaiting spares. We've also added uh, Boeing 737 narrow body capacity, as you saw earlier, and we have another aircraft arriving in March uh, 2024. This is an interim measure to help build integrity uh, to our schedule, our capacity, um, and to meet that growing demand through 24. Our strategic fleet modernization program, coupled with our network expansion and infrastructure upgrades, will position Air New Guinea as a premier aviation partner for the extractive resource sector. We are committed to providing reliable and efficient and cost-effective air transport solutions that support the sector's growth and contribute to nation economic prosperity. The renewal of our fleet plays a vital role in our ongoing commitment to reducing our company's environmental impact particularly in terms of carbon emissions. And as I mentioned earlier, 30% reduction in fuel consumption and incorporating advanced materials, and New Guinea is actively contributing to Papua New Guinea's pledge to align with global net zero emission targets. And furthermore, our newly acquired jet fleet will facilitate a greater opt adoption of sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, uh, within our operations as we've already initiated efforts to explore and establish reliable SAF supply chains. Our ability to prepare for this boom is significantly bolstered by the unwavering support of the Marape Rosso government. The government's commitment to Air New Guinea has been instrumental in our transformation journey. Air New Guinea has an objective to provide safe, competent, affordable, and accessible air transport services for the betterment of the livelihood and welfare of the citizenry of Papua New Guinea. We are also charged, understandably, with delivering an appropriate return on investment without compromising the first objective. We are thankful for the Minister, the Honorable William Duma, and the PNG government for continuously backing Air New Guinea's aggressive fleet acquisition strategy and providing the necessary financial support to underpin and secure the purchase program of our new aircraft, and that is no small undertaking. This unwavering support has enabled us to sign purchase agreements earlier this year with manufacturers to modernize our fleet, so we are committed. This is happening, and we are en to enable us to enhance our operating efficiency and expand our network. Beyond financial support, the PNG government is also committed to fostering a robust and inclusive aviation industry through its development of appropriate national content policy, and this policy will encourage greater participation of local business in the aviation sector and ensure that the benefits of the extractive boom extend beyond the resource extraction to encompass industrial growth and development long after project construction has concluded. By promoting local content and fostering skilled workforce, the national content policy will also strengthen the aviation sector's resilience and competitiveness but also contribute to the overall economic diversification and sustainable development of Papua New Guinea. The proposed development of an aviation academy by Air New Guinea, uh, with the support of Airbus and the, governments, and the governments of Papua New Guinea and France, is a project that continues to gather momentum. It continues to promote Port Moresby as a Pacific aviation hub, and I know this is a program that is very dear to the heart of my chairman, Carl Yellow. It presents an opportunity to develop aviation professionals for tomorrow. We need pilots, we need engineers, we need cabin crew, we need management, and that academy will play an integral role in their development. And I reiterate the need for competent, capable, and qualified resource to help sustain Air New Guinea's future, because it is pointless spending 
three, million, uh, three billion kina now if we are unable to activate and use those aircraft to the full advantage to which, which they will bring. The PNG government's comprehensive support encompasses financial backing and strategic policy initiatives has also been instrumental in enabling Air New Guinea to prepare for extractive industries booth and uh, boom and position itself as a catalyst for Papua New Guinea's economic growth. And we are deeply grateful to the government for its unwavering commitment to our success and its vision for a thriving aviation industry that contributes to the nation's long-term development. With the backing of the government, the National Airports Corporation has initiated an extensive airport infrastructure improvement initiative aimed at enhancing runway capacity uh, through extensions and reinforcement. Without longer runways and without strengthened runways, it will be very difficult to operate these aircraft across the domestic market. We can currently only fly our 737s to five airports in, in PNG, and we need to expand that in order to expand uh, utilization and operation of these aircraft. We, we absolutely want to be able to pro uh, provide uh, new fleet uh, across the country and not to a limited number of aerodromes. It is pertinent for me to acknowledge the support of Kummel Consolidated Holdings under the stewardship of David Kavanamore, whose team has been committed to the reform and development of Air New Guinea, and they genuinely have walked every step of the way with us to this point. Ladies and gentlemen, um, again, as we stand on the cusp of an extraordinary economic boom, Air New Guinea is ready to soar to new heights. We are poised to not only meet the increased demand for air travel, but also harness the opportunities presented by this growth to further connect our nation, facilitate trade and investment, and contribute to the sustainable development of Papua New Guinea. It's with the unwavering support of government and the dedication of our staff and the resilience of our people uh, that we are confident that Air New Guinea will continue to play a pivotal role in shaping the bright future of Papua New Guinea. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a safe and joyful New Year, and we look forward to welcoming you on board your next Bird of Paradise service. Thank you for your attention.